first of all, I want to thank everybody for the comments that I get down below. And uh, while you're here, please hit the subscribe button so, and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for coming back for part two. Let's jump right into it. We've already gotten marked. We'll 20 by 50 right here. Syntec system. Off. So this is what we use. Okay. Yeah. This is what we use. We'll, uh, 45 mil non-reinforced rubber. That's what you need to get right there. Best or ABC distributing. One by fours for strapping. OSB plywood 7 16 A box of exterior deck screws, inch and five eighths. A pen for marking off. Straight blade for cutting. This thing is a mess. Remove the metal. Little taste of the before. And what it looks like. This is probably what your mobile home looks like or similar. This one has a little peak on it. Some of them are flat. Bad holes, bad holes. We will be adding vents on this thing because not any. I'm not even sure how they got away with no vents to start with, but this thing has never had a vent on it. That hole right over there is from a stovepipe vent, their heater vent that came out, but they didn't have any vents. So basically they don't vent these mobile homes, but we're going to. These roofs are actually more solid than you think. The 2x2s two that are under here, because of the way they build them, obviously, do have a considerable amount of strength. What we have Chris doing down here right now, if you notice, the first thing we did, check it out, this is an important step. Find your rafters. We poked four holes there because we wanted to make sure we found each side and we pop a line dead center. And that goes all the way across. We pop them lines every two foot or everywhere where there's a rafter. Chris is getting ready to mark off. He's got this outside one by four that's going down here, and then he's got it marked for where the next one by four is going right there. And we'll do another one and another one. There's gonna be like six or seven strips down here, one by four. A little more than we usually have to use. But we're putting all this stuff on two foot on center. It's not 16s, so we wanna make this thing strong. Chris is a big guy. He's He's able to walk on the two with twos without them breaking, without plywood. So imagine what it's going to be like when we add the plywood. From the edge of the roof, you want to mark the centers of every two feet all the way across so you know where your boards are going. So inch and three quarters back. So your one by will run in the right spot inch and three quarters back on your four foot line. We'll pop them lines and that will be where we lay our one buys down at. Here we go. We have one by fours by 14. That's what we got at our local home de uh, depot store. We use these guns for installing so we don't have to run power.
big dogs. First sheep. Stove pipe looks like we'll be getting rid of that. Yeah, not in use anymore. <coughs> and we do this everywhere, and you'll want to do the same. find a link to these screws that we use and the drills down below. A lot of the material list, anything that you can get on Amazon, I'm going to go ahead and put a link, put a link down below to that. Walking. There we go. I changed the frame right here a little bit. Turned up the resolution. I hope that makes it a little better. Alright, we're on to our next step. Add the 2 by 4 to the outside. All the way around. We've got a pretty good beat on this so far. It's looking real good. It's all plywooded in, all screwed down. Man, this thing is, I'm telling you, you can jump up and down on this thing now. So I don't know what people are saying. Oh, it's going to be too much weight. It's going to be weak. It's going to make the roof weak. Can I say bullshit? Bullshit. There's four of us here right now. And if you took four of us and we stood right there, all four of us, and we stood right there, would probably fall straight through the roof before the plywood was put on. Now that we put the plywood in on, I would put six of us in the same spot. How about that? Six people in one spot, I could stand here and it wouldn't go anywhere. So I call bullshit when you people say, oh, that's too much weight. The trusses won't hold it. Ridiculous, okay? I'm calling bullshit on that one. Two by fours. All the way around.
That's good. Closing it in. That's what we're doing. We're going to close that spot right in. Other than that, it'd be really hard to put rubber up that wall. Close it in. That looks nice. Close it off. Let's get rid of that problem area right there. Pain in the butt. Now you'll never have no leaks there. Now the transition, the front porch goes up underneath there before it connects to the wall with that metal that had there. It was garbage. Now we don't have to deal with that anymore. Is this amazing or what, people? Subscribe to my channel. Look down below. Look down below in the description of the video. You should find a list of materials that can be bought. And the place that I buy my material at. ABC or best. Right, here we are, day two. Day two of our rubber roof over a mobile home trailer. If you have one of these and you're looking for a way to stop the leaks forever, we found it. <laughs> oh, a little shady in my face here. We found it, and here it is. Hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe it. If you're interested in this on your house, you might want to subscribe to this channel. After you've installed all your tuba force. Hey, we pull that rubber back real quick right there, just so I can see that. I didn't get that. After you've installed all your tuba force around here, and this is how you do that. Pull it right back all the way across that so I can look at it. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Coming up. We had to replace a bunch of rotten wood that was over here. We still have more to do, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, going up. Flop it over the top. Now that everything's done, the wood's all on, all the way around. We are folding the rubber back, back a little bit more, Miller, so that we up. can make our metal. All right. Where are you going with it now? All right. So today is. Uh, Gonna done, be done a little bit different. We've got one roller. Awesome. We'll go. I'll go get some more. Um, today's a little bit different. We're going to glue down the metal. Excuse me. Glue down the rubber first before we put the metal on. And the reason being is because we've got some rain moving in. Okay. So we got some rain moving in. We're gonna go ahead and glue this down 100%. Um, and then come back tomorrow if it rains tonight and put the metal fascia on. I was hoping to get this done today. But this weather moving in so fast doesn't look like we're going to we got this piece all completely repaired and plywooded or we'll call it OSB some people are get mad when I call it plywood it's plywood to me it's OSB plywood it's four by eight sheets of OSB plywood call it what you want anyways <laughs> stupid comments I get about OSB for Christ's sakes Let's take a walk up here and see what's going on it's going rather well check it out Again, we're installing the rubber on this one first. The reason for that, we got rain moving in. Again, check out in the description below. You'll see where you can uh, possibly get some of these things that we use right on my Amazon link. You can actually get glue, rubber, lots of different things on Amazon. We buy our rubber from Best Distributing or ABC Supply. The main thing about this is putting plenty of glue on there so that the rubber can can uh, be pushed down in it. 
and it has enough glue to stick to the other side. This is a pretty good sized piece of rubber and what we did is folded it in half and do half of it at a time. I'm just in the way. Let me get out of your way. Now we've pulled it back the other way. These are for our vent pipes or the toilets or whatever. You always want to leave them. No, you don't need to make an 8x8 eight eight square. You need to get down there and grab it and uh, mark a pencil mark line around the thing probably. Well, for some reason they make these mobile homes and they don't put any vents on them for the actual inside of the attic to uh, breathe and I'm not sure why they did that but that's the way they do most of them so we come up here and the only vents that were on here is that vent that vent and then there's one right over there where that white thing is and that's only for the toilet drains to vent and that's it so Sometimes we've been known to put them back just like that, except for replacing them toilet vents. But, yes, I do get a lot of comments on it. People like to see me maybe add some vents to them. So this is what I've decided we would do. I've got some vents right here. So we're going to end up cutting a hole and placing that right there. We're going to get another hole. We're going to replace it right there. So then both of these ends here will be vented. More than it's ever been vented before, so it's, uh, hopefully that works for us good. Okay, on this section here, this is a little bit different. Okay, um, we put bonding adhesive here, and we put bonding adhesive there because we're going to stick it up that wall, and I don't want it to have to cure and slide down that wall. So if you do it this way, with glue on both pieces it's contact cement you want to be careful putting that up the wall because where it touches it sticks so you very carefully do that section and you wait until this turns back clear again in this situation in this situation you want to leave it so that it's milky white and then pull your glue into it because if it's dry your rubber will not stick to it so it's wet <coughs> pull it out. Oh, oh you pull in the ladder. I mean, you pull in the broom. Yeah. You could never take a 240 pound man and walk One, across two, this three. roof like that if it didn't have plywood on it. Let me tell you that. One, two, three. This thing is strong, strong by adding this plywood. Okay. One, two, three. Nice. Sorry, and you just keep doing that until you get back here. The bottom of this thing measures right around seven and a half inches, so we're just going to cut an eight inch hole and we're just going to make it square and drop that vent in it, or that's where it will go after the rubber gets put on. All right, now we've cut a hole. This is where the hole will be for the uh, vent we're going to install to cool this end down. Wherever it touches, it sticks. So up underneath. Push. Okay, hold up and 
You probably pick it up, Chris, just like you do. Pick it straight up. Everybody pick up straight. There you go. Just place it on the wall. There you go, guys. Mm -hmm. This rubber will end up coming back here and lapping this rubber. Seam tape all the way across. Nice roll of seam. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Setting up the metal brake. Getting ready to bend some metal on this thing. This is what I'm using. If you have a metal brake, it really, really helps out extremely. Pretty much impossible to do this metal without it. I didn't get it on video, I kind of meant to. That's our first piece of metal. First piece of metal. Boy, that looks good. And the rubber goes over that. It's going to be nice. Sliding a piece of metal down. Just don't nail this end down here. Yeah, that way we can get it back. Right here, be good. Mm -hmm. Pull it up nice and no. tight like you got this it. End, nice, Matt. That's good. What we're wanting to make sure is that that piece of metal that goes in about an inch is just level. Right. And like it's supposed to be. You want to push up too high. Here. Yeah, I'm going to put one there. And I'll also one up, one, one down. Right you... A good idea to put two in. Your hammer. Uh, pull your pelt. Yeah, it is. I'll pull it up there. Alright. Yeah, looks good. Nail it. Yeah, that looks good. Push up too high? Really? Yeah. Look, you're outside here. I don't know. Oh, it's too wide. I doubt it. It looked like a damn limb fell on it and busted it. Can it go on the back side of that other piece? Damn it, the sun's in the camera. Because it's folded down right there, you can't see it, but because it's folded down right there, you have to snip it, fold it up, snip it right at the trailer, the piece that bends down, yep. And then bend it up, that's getting nice. Put it, you need to put it where you need it, Matt, and then, um, so you got the overhang, and then Billy, if he has a pencil, he can mark his where it's going to stop at down here at the bottom. Alright. It's not sticking out down there, buddy. Touch his back here. So you come down. Your rubber's gonna end up coming up over it. Termination bar will be right here. So a 90 and another 90. It's all you're doing is making a Z. This would make an inch and a half. Gives you something to turn up, put your screws in right here, and up 
here. We're nailing with these little um, stainless steel nails. Billy is going down through the bottom and adding termination screws in the 90 we put right there. Besides the nails here, we screw this all the way down there straight. So he'll be pushing it up here to make it nice and straight. start the termination bar and when you put the turn bar on this is the back the back has a texture to it and the reason for that so it grabs the rubber when you put your screws in on the front side here what it looks like you're gonna put your screws in here here and every hole and right here this will be standing up just like this in the house back here and right there along that line where the rubber meets that the reason why they made that lip a little bit bigger is so you can run a cock bead at the top of that all the way across. You're going to run a bead of EPDM caulking all the way down, all the way down. At the bottom of the turn bar is where the rubber will be cut, so the rubber does not hang out past the termination bar. All right, here we are. All the face is done. Unfortunately, I did not get the seams on this one, and I really wanted to. But if you go back and look at my last video, it will show you how to do the seams. But they got ahead of me and I wasn't here when they did it. And he didn't make a video of it, but we do have all the metal on all the way around. And now we're getting ready to start this termination bar I was just talking about. Oh, oh, this is something I wanted to cover also. And what we do here is underneath this, there's a hole, this is vented. Under here, the hole, and right on this edge, well, you can see some squeezing out. Just on the inside of that edge, we put the EPDM caulk, caulk the crap out of it. Caulk the crap out of it, and then screw them things down into it. Yep. You see it squeezing out here and there. Another one down here. And once they got this part done, this really looks good. Plus the spark vent holes, there's another one down there. So you want to put these on. Just caulk underneath the vent. Stick it down, put some turn bar screws in it. This is what we use so that you, you'll know. Here we go. Black lap sealing. Okay, Carlisle's Syntec system. It's called lap sealant if you need to pick it up. It comes in tubes. And then this one here will run down to that one. It looks good. All right, putting on the termination bar. Let's see if I can get this on video. It's not that easy. Okay. All right, sorry about the camera here. I'm trying to hold it over the edge. I guess I should have done this from the ground. Uh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's an inch and a half down. You're going to turn bar it. I'll hold it. I'll hold mine. Put me where I need to be. You like it? Yep. Let's put a screw. Beautiful. Okay. So you're going to do that all the way down through there. And then what this is for, the slip right here is to be the reason why they make it wide at the top so you can put a cock bead and it, it holds it in. It holds it in right there, all the way. Um, over tighten your screws when you do this. Don't over tighten your screws and break that washer all out. Uh, won't be worth crap. So that's the termination bar right there. And then the rubber right here gets cut at the bottom all the way around. Uh, let me move over here. Cutters. There's some cutters right here. We can use some these to cut this stuff. You don't have to wrap the corner, okay? You do not have to wrap the corner. All you have to do is cut it flush with the corner and start another one at the same spot. He's cutting that. It's the easiest way to snip them. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. Got it flush with the corner and then run no, this one right down in front of it. It's going to be beautiful. Huh? What side do we want to fold it to? The front or the side? I'm doing my best, people. Holding this camera. I don't have it on a tripod. It's really not the best way to do it in this situation. Okay. Let me just a little bit. Let me get just a little bit of it so I can get a cut on this angle. You might want to put your last there screw in the other one first. Sure. I wouldn't worry about that. You don't have to cut that angle. No. No. Just, just like, do that. It like yes, that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I'd screw. I'd put a screw in that other one okay. before you even go. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and screw that last one up. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> don't pull too hard, but just enough. You cut it after the fact. All right, I was about to say, you yeah. want to cut it now? Now nah, you cut it once you get screwed down here, one or two of them. Yep, beautiful. Beautiful. Get a couple blocks up there, and then you can go cut the end after this. Help him out right here, Billy. Stay with him. You go ahead and put the screw in. Yeah, there you go, Billy. I got this. You just mm -hmm. screw it. Yep. He's got Cut the rubber pole just a little bit too, so it's looking good. That's nice. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Put Every make sure other. you clear your screw. Right clear your screw. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, guys, all the way around the house. That's all you have to do. This bad boy will be done. You notice we're using an inch and a half blocker right here. Keep the distance, yes, that inch and a half block right there, and that's what we're keeping from the top down to the top, top of the turn bar, just like that. And that's how you run it. That way you want to keep it straight all the way around. It's long up top here. No big deal. When you get to the top, once you once you put your last screw in right here, then you can come way out to this end. Just snip it off, then screw it in. Done deal. I got it pulled. You just let that screw See that? Not that bad. Right. Now you want to... Go ahead and cut it. All right. Go ahead and cut it right there. There you go. Right at the peak. Mm -hmm. Pull it out, Lil. Beautiful thing. Not go all the way down. You ain't snipping but part of it. There, there you go. go. There you go, buddy. Beautiful. Beautiful job. There you go. Put your block in there. Put your screws in it. Done deal. Like I said, we'll come around the top of this thing. The last step is, most people don't see it because I haven't ever put it on video, is caulking that top. Lit. That's you don't want the water going behind the screw here, so caulking. That's what the lid is for. I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope everybody gets something out of it. Um, I make these videos just so that people can uh, maybe figure out how to get their own stuff done, or if they know somebody with some decent carpentry skills, there's a good possibility that that person could watch a few of these videos no matter where you're at, and um, and possibly uh, do it, get it done yourself. We order the materials at ABC or Best Distributing. A lot of the other parts, if you need uh, parts and pieces, I do have a link down below to my Amazon channel and you can buy the caulking lap sealant. You can buy the, um, the seam tape. You can buy the knives that I use, tin snips that I like the best. Um, you can actually buy this termination stuff here. You can buy the caps that we use here. You can buy these caps here. So you can buy the termination screws on Amazon. So there'll be a link down below. And I'm gonna try to put on this one, I'm gonna try to put a um I'm gonna try to, try to put a material list of exactly what we used. The rubber that I buy generally comes 15 feet to 20 feet wide. Um, sometimes I buy the 30 foot wide, it's according to how big the trailer is. This was a 20 foot wide roll. And we uh, actually had two pieces. We did the end with a piece we had left from another roll, and we did this from another roll. So that's why we put this seam, one seam in this roof right here. The reason why for this seam is because we had two pieces of rubber. And if you notice, this is seam tape under here. So you use primer underneath this primer and primer so what you're seeing here is a primer you want to prime it first and then you put your seam tape down and you want to hang that seam tape out here just a little bit past 
past the edge where the the roof is going to lap, the rubber is going to lap, and that way uh, you won't have. If this is behind it, like back here, then this front will lift up and it won't be done properly, and you'll you'll get eventually it will just fail. So another thing too, if you got somebody using gasoline to clean these laps instead of what they call primer, the real primer, that will also fail. So if you want your roof to last the longest, you're going to want to use seam tape. And we actually use a big six inch piece of seam tape and uh, that gives you a lot of coverage right there. Of course, a lot of people use the three, I like the six, just it's wider, it's more protection. And the seam tape is what keeps this edge down. And then after that, see this edge right here, we're going to take this again. We're going to go right down through this seam all the way down just before we get off of it. And the reason why we do it just before we get off is because somebody's going to walk in it. So that's the last thing we do. Generally doesn't get put on the video, but just so you know, this is called lap sealant for a reason. Black lap seal. This is a lap. Let your seam tape come out. Caulk this all the way down as your last step. Same thing here. We caulk underneath, but before we finish, we're gonna take this and run all the way around here. And then again, this is also made. Check this out, people. So all part of the steps. Hope you're not missing these steps. The next step is right here, all the way down that line. That's the reason for that lip. Okay, all the way. All right, people. I cannot stay here for the rest of this job, so I'm going to let these guys handle it. And it looks like they're doing a great job. Look at this. We walked. We just framed that in, closed that section in. And, and you can do the same thing if you have a situation like this and you're trying to figure out how to get this to work. Okay, so we all metal in all around here. Just metal. Just make a piece of metal is all you got to do. And then this would get over here and be glued down, terminated, termination screws and all that stuff. And this is also going to be pulled down on this side. And of course that big piece that's hanging down there is going to be cut and we'll have it down to the turn bar screws and cut the edge, the edge off carefully. And that'll take care of this, man. This is this is a done deal, people. I'm, I wish I could stay here for the rest of it. I really have to go. <clears throat> but the last step here is termination bar. And this. Take that back. We're going to take this. Check it out. And we're going to put this right here so that water comes off of this thing right at the stairs. They're not going to have water come down right on their head. That'll be up underneath the termination bar. There's another stairs over here, so we're going to do the same thing. Drew, you can also call me at 910-294-1761. That's really my best number to get help of me. If you have any questions, give me a ring. Thanks for watching, people. And please hit that subscribe button and that like button. See that little thumbs up? I'd love to get some thumbs up on my videos. A lot of people make comments. But a lot of people just don't hit that like button. So if you're here and you liked it, hit the like button for me, I'd appreciate it. All right, all right, so we have got rained out a little bit, so I'm sorry about the delay on the video, people. Sometimes we just go right here. There you go. How cool is that? Finished. Now, my guys, I noticed I don't have a knife with me, so I noticed that my guys were, it was Saturday when we finished this thing, and they were in a hurry, I imagine. And they left a piece of rubber up there, which I'm going to have to have them come back, because I did not bring a knife with me to cut it off. Hope you liked the video. If you do, hit the like button. I mean, if you just like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Another one of Drew's Roofing and Home Repair. Mobile Home Roof Install.